This is a full review of the Honda CRV and a very special one because this one here is the new hybrid. Does it make sense in consumption and in technology because this hybrid here is really different from any other hybrid you've seen before. I'll explain you all about this special technology. Welcome here to our article review with Thomas and on the detail tour on exterior, interior and this hybrid driving experience in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! The color for today is called Platinum White Pearl. You can also just say white. <laughs> then you have this friendly Honda face in the front, adaptive shutters for the grille on the inside and the comp structure grille on the outside. Headlamps already come standard with LED and you can also see the LED daytime running light right there. It has this crossover contrast still and it is actually capable of soft off-roading, 20 centimeters ground clearance overall and the hybrid version we have here today it's not looking any different. You have a hybrid batch, we'll show you that very soon, but other than that it doesn't make any visual difference. 4 meters 58, 15 foot or 180 inches is the length of the Honda CRV. Comfortable runaround vehicle is, by the way, uh, the abbreviation CRV. Very interesting. It sounds a little bit plain, doesn't it? <laughs> but everyone knows the abbreviation CRV. It's pretty much popular all over the world. Also, one of the best selling SUVs overall. Interesting. Wheels come from 17 inch, then those ones here are 18 inch, and the top one would be 19 inch. And then here, this is the hybrid logo. That's the only thing you can see on the outside that this one is the hybrid vehicle. Other than that, it has this classic SUV shape, rather angular design right here, pretty much upright windows, but that's good for the visibility. Here also with a darker shape right there. And then this classic crossover wheel arch look too. So the overall design is rather conservative, but it looks a little bit fresher here in this new generation if you compare it to the predecessor one but for sure they don't want to get into big revolutions from the exterior and so on. And I think for this vehicle, they also do not have to. Or what do you think? In the rear, you can see this tail lamp shape which goes vertical and horizontal. It's the same than Volvo also does, for example. Brighter contrast in the lower area and we also have AWD logo here because this hybrid engine is either available with front wheel drive or with all wheel drive, you know, then with a clutch also that also torque is transported to the rear wheels. Not a separate electric motor is being used. Soon more to the technology details when we talk about the engine there in the front. This design in the rear, of course, this is probably the biggest update if you compare it to the predecessor generation also with somewhat friendly and round lines. So what about the engines now right here? What about the normal ones before we get to the hybrid? You have a 1.5 liter turbo petrol engine, 170 horsepower with a manual gearbox or 190 horsepower with a CVT automatic. Yes, there were those oil delusion issues in some cases in markets with very, very low temperatures and when they then did some short-term runs. Therefore, there weren't any cases in Europe, Honda says. And for the existing markets where there were some problems, they have some software and hardware updates for that and not relevant to newer models, that's what Honda says. Then, US and Russian market, for example, you have a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated engine. And this one then here, the hybrid. So this is the petrol engine, ICE, so internal combustion engine, combined with an electric motor. The horsepower output is also in the total system. Horsepower auto output of the electric motor is 184 horsepower. And the interesting thing is that the acceleration figure is actually a little bit better than with the turbo petrol engine with this one here. Sorry, it's not clean, <laughs> but I think we can live with it. 8.8 .8 seconds with front wheel drive or 9.2 seconds is the acceleration figure. Whereas a turbo petrol engine, 
would even be a little bit slower. Very, very interesting. So, and what about the very exact technology of this one? So, you have two electric motors, but one is just for the generator. So, it's basically the ICE, delivering power to the generator, and the generator gives electricity to the drivetrain electric motor. And this one, then, is powering the front wheels, and maybe also a little bit, you know, talk on demand is sent on the rear wheels when you have the all-wheel drive version of this one. But that's, you know, the key concept of it. So, and just in a speed of 80 to 120 kilometers an hour, the ICE combustion engine is directly giving power to the front wheels. The, yeah, that's a little bit complicated. But again, the main key of the system is that usually the combustion engine would not have contact to the front wheels except for this speed region because in this case then the combustion engine is most efficient also in general with a normal just only a combustion engine car and the pure difference is that for example a toyota hybrid drivetrain the combustion engine powers the car and then the battery is also helping a little bit here the battery is just a very very small buffer you know its size is below two kilowatt hours and it's just, you know, for recuperation a little bit and then for some extra boost for the pure EV mode. But the main thing about this one here is that you have this concept combustion engine, generator, electric motor. And then you have the direct link and therefore also no transmission at all. So a very special system, totally different than we've seen before with other hybrid drivetrains. Will it work? Will it also have a very good consumption figure at the end of the day? We'll find that out in the driving part. This is the car key, also with keyless entry function. Press it here to close the car and on the inside your hand to open the vehicle. This one is an executive build trim, so a very high top trim. And you can see top part is here, soft touch. Then they have this wooden inserts, but you can also get it in lower trims as well. So it is a wood style, by the way, so it's not real wood, but I think it feels quite nice and matte and it looks nice, so why not? Then, door handles also quite good quality here, a memory seat in this case. Um, this glossy finish right there, I think that catches a lot of fingerprints, that's I think not really necessary. And the inset of the doors, for smaller bottles is okay, bigger bottles, yeah, maybe some. And then the interior, Again, it's rather conservative styling, but definitely fresher than with the predecessor generation. Steering wheel with a lot of controls. Left side here, for example, for the head-up display and for the instruments. On the right side for cruise control. Seat heating even available. Then the seats, they have the same form, also in the base seats, but they come with fabric usually as a cover. This one optional animal skin. Again, in the high trim, it gets really expensive, but you can also get some baits of 30,000 um, euros or dollars base CRE, which also do just fine. And the fabric seats are also pretty cool. I've tested them before. And what's always nice is that in either case, it really goes, the cover goes all the way around here. That's really comfortable for your legs and so on. And you can see is a very even and easy entry to the vehicle too. Let's now get inside and it's again as I said very easy entry. It's a high grown-up SUV seating position. It's very comfortable from the seat form as well. Also for taller drivers. And when we made it 86 or 6 foot 1 that leaves at the side here just a little headroom. You have more headroom when you don't go for the optional glass roof which we have in here. We'll soon show to you in detail. But again, it's still totally sufficient also for taller drivers. And those seats are also quite wide, so they give you a lot of room to play with. Um, overall, I found them indeed very comfortable. So um, pretty cool as for the basic seat form. Again, here with the electric setup, but also if you just have the manual one, 
they will also do just fine. The steering wheel is a manual control in reach and height right there. The angle is not the best to me, I think. Um, somehow I feel it would should be more like, you know, like this, you know, not like in reach or in height, but just the angle, how it's um, installed. It should be better when it's like a little bit more upright. That's, you know, how I felt it here at least. Interior overview, I think, is a little bit overloaded on the one hand. Of course, less buttons than in the previous generation, but I think it's not a very calm design with a lot of different design elements here. What is nice, again, this wooden visual inlet. It also feels very good. Then this one here is not entirely hard, but also not super soft, but I think it's a good cover right there. The top part here, also a mix of hard and soft, so not entirely hard, not entirely soft. Two seven inch screens, one right here, also one in digital instrument, zoom or deal to that. You can see this head up display is in a separate plastic glass layer that folds up or down. And we'll also control that one very soon. First of all, let's continue with the overview because this is quite handy. Still, manual climate knob. Build quality here could be a little bit better, but it's easy to control it while driving. And Interesting also how to put in the gears with P, R, or N, or D. This is just it. And I mean, why not? It's easy to control. And also, you know, you don't have a big stick that stands out then, for example. Then you have some driving modes right there. We'll talk about that one very soon. The steering wheel also, how the controls are being assorted. Not sure because here you control something of the head-up display. But then here you can also access something in the head-up display. And... This then the button here to control the instruments. This one then is for volume, right side here for the cruise control, seat heating. But how you know you control then you reset the trip meter right there. So I think it's not super intuitive. You have really have to learn it at first. So again, it's a little bit cleaner than before, but design-wise, it's not something that calms you down. However, the most functions are actually easily accessible. The head-up display, yes, it's not the one that is directly projected into the windscreen. It's not flickering in real life, by the way. But, I mean, you can still see it very well. Um, it's a clear display, some GPS information there when you have a route running, for example. And, of course, the most important thing is then a loud speed and the current speed you're driving. Here for the hybrid, you see the battery status on the left side and the fuel status on the right side. It's an internal built hybrid, so to say. You cannot charge it from the outside, just refuel it and then the middle screen is quite interesting because you have different functionalities oh oh that's a nice preview of the consumption taking all away the excitement from the driving part <laughs> but it will still be exciting i can promise you so then you have different stuff you can for example have some gps information there but even more important is that here we can see the all-way drive distribution so we also see some arrows on the right uh, left part and on the lower part the front part just when it's front wheel drive the rear part when you have talk to the rear wheels but even more important is the other view and you have to go through it quite a lot there we go and there we can see then uh, where is actually which coming from so what power is being applied at the moment i'll talk about it when we drive the car details to the infotainment system you see here it lacks responsiveness it could be a little bit faster however the visualization is quite okay and we've um, you know driven a route with this one already today and we actually found our way quite nice so the functionality is overall okay but again visualization and cpu wise they could use some upgrades most important is that they offer the smartphone connection right here with the apple carplay or also with the android auto connection with cable then you can always go back to the car infotainment system and when it's too bright at night or so you can also um, control the brightness here in a quite fast way again the system it is the integration is quite okay but the software they have on that there is already somewhat outdated the real knob that remains here is again one for the volume. So when I have it here in reverse, then we can also see the rear view camera in the screen. And it's actually a quite nice resolution, but it's also not too big. Therefore, they can keep the resolution somewhat okay. And also adapts a little bit here to the lines where you're actually steering to. The angle here is, of course, a little bit strange because it's so integrated than in the lower area. Lower middle console right here with the power outlet then adaptive cup holders then we have here place to put your smartphone on for example but you can also move it back and then there is you know 
two USB supplies, another power outlet as well. A lot of space on the inside. We also have this armrest here with the leatherette cover and shake test. You can see it shakes a little bit. And then a lot of room here really. Um, either like this or you can move it back again. Or you can also just remove the whole stuff here. This is also possible and then put it out completely of course even better when the smartphone is not on it but then you can see you have a lot of space on the interior here but here of course it makes somewhat sense to keep your smartphone on that and wow wow that was some balance in here with one hand and keeping your smartphone on tablet come on please thumbs up here for the balancing on the inside inlet of the lower middle console thing under the armrest yeah <laughs> now to the rear, this is very interesting. First of all, the rear part here, it has a look of would be soft touch, but it's actually hard pack, but we have the wood style inlets here. But the really interesting thing is, look at this, 90 degree opening of the rear doors. That's then so easy to get inside. And of course, also really cool to install your child seats as parents. Isofix at the outside seats each. And it's so easy, you know, to get also bigger child seats in and out with those 90 degree opening doors, really cool. Also, is a wide area of seating surface here, is very comfortable in the rear. Headroom wise, again with a panoramic roof, still some headroom left for me, one with A6 or six foot one. Without the panoramic roof, it also would be a little bit more. Leg room, plenty, 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 plenty. This is really amazing, so the use of interior space they have here is absolutely amazing this is probably even best in segment really cool i can just you know uh mention that all over again this is so spacious here in the rear and this is also i think the most unique selling point of this vehicle the comfort in the rear and the space you have in the rear there's also an option that you can slide this bench 15 centimeters front and back this is not in this very car we have here but that would also be an option especially if you go for the seven seater that you can vary the leg room you have in the front maybe move it a little bit forward then have some more in the third seating row with six and seven seat however in the hybrid the seven seater option is not available therefore it doesn't play too much of a role and you know the trunk is also long enough so especially if you go with the hybrid this one will also do just fine also interesting that in the hybrid here you do not sit higher in the rear bench you do not lose any headroom that's also a very interesting aspect because the additional battery they put right there in the trunk so you just lose the ability for the six and seven seat but you do not lose anything which you have here in the third uh, in the so the limited third seating row yes that's not possible but no restrictions here for the second seating row. Flipping the seats from here, by the way, there's some lever at the side, and then you can see that the lower seat is actually going down a little bit. That's interesting, you know? And that ensures that you have an all flat area. By the way, those Honda Magic seats that you pull this one here up, it's not available for the CRV. Then, a couple of here in the armrest, but they're not adaptive. And, what about here, the middle part? There you have two USB supplies for charging devices. And you can see there's a, hardly any existing middle tunnel right there. So very well built in this case. And when I put myself to the middle seat now, I couldn't put my feet here even. Um, and I can sit here. Well, it's somewhat, of course, higher in the middle part, but it still works also with the third adult here in the second seating row. What about the loading area? You can also get an electric hatch right here. It takes it while. Dum, dum, dum. There we are. So, and then some luggage set up here for you. You can see you can also put things uh, vertical in it. So it's actually high enough. And let me also clean it up for you. Let you can see a little bit more what we actually have. And then we also take measurements and so on. So here we are, see. A lot of room there. Yes, this top part is a little bit wobbly, but the reason for that is that there's also this version with six and seven seat. But again, it's not available here because they've put the additional battery below it. And therefore, you just have your toolbox here in the, in the part and then in the other part here, you cannot access that. So, and the normal trunk length would be here at a little bit less than a meter in the middle part it's almost a meter so a little bit less than a meter and in width it's actually 
little bit more than a meter. But again, the strong point is the height already here. And this one is 47 centimeters to the cover. And if you would then use the whole area up to here, that's almost 85 centimeters. And that's really amazing. We hardly see it also here in the top part. That is really wide, almost a meter even here. So that's actually pretty cool. So good dimensions you can use. And then you can also flip the seats already from here with those levers right and left, like this and like this. And the seats flip. Oh, maybe we need some help right here because the front seat is not all the way in the front but that's again another point because the front seat is not electric and the reason for that is you know you can also adjust it a little bit faster then but it's not going all the way flat just a little bit more on the front like this and if we then check the maximum length we can reach right here so to my driver's seat would be one meters 83 as i would be driving and of course the whole two meters then if you focus for example you can use the middle part here even a little bit longer than two meters then so overall the trunk quite flexible and that's also the reason why so many families go for the cre of course the biggest strength is the legroom in the second seating row but also the trunk is very very well usable by the way, you also have a 12 volt power supply socket right there in the left corner of the trunk. Welcome to Thomas's driving part today with the CRV hybrid. This will be very interesting. So, start up of the vehicle, engine is not running, put it into D mode. So, the ICE, you know, the internal combustion engine is not running, otherwise, we talk about electric motors. and. This is the first mode of driving this hybrid. So, ah, and there it is. There's the IC. So you, we started pure electric, very slow speed. And also depending you know, on the temperature, for example, what's going on at the moment, then the car decides in which mode is actually driving. And the second mode is the hybrid mode where the ICE then is running and giving power to the generator and the generator then gives the electricity to this electric motor and then we're driving. This is also the all-wheel drive version. So this is sort of, sort of like a classic all-wheel drive with the clutch, so front-wheel drive plus some on-demand. There's not a separate electric motor for the rear axle. So it doesn't make too much of a difference if you have front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive maybe if you have some soft off-road situations where that might be helpful. Yeah, and then you hear something of an engine, yes, definitely. But as I explained to you earlier, they try to keep it in an optimum running cycle, you know, like in a sweet spot of consumption. And we'll see how that one plays out. So we have like a you know, nice testing route here for you. And I'll just, you know, zero out again the consumption figure and try to see because 7.5 liters I was um, having as a consumption with the 1.5 liter turbo that's about 31 mpg US 38 mpg UK and see how that one plays out when I'm not on the brakes the car is recuperating or regenerating um, energy to the battery again the big difference here with this vehicle is the battery is just a buffer um, you know just below two kilowatt hours in size. So it's a small buffer for regeneration and then for some more boost if we need it or want it. And again, as a buffer to keep this engine in the sweet spot. Here, when I'm accelerating just very slightly, maybe pick it also up on camera. I'm driving on the EV mode only. You can also see it right here. Now, getting a little bit faster, the combustion engine is turning on and giving us more power overall. So we can also have a view of that right here. When I'm in the pure EV mode, there, for example, now it says a green EV right there. And then also it's really like an electric vehicle. Talk to the, um, to the engineers here also before and they said, they conceive their concept here as an electric vehicle which is powered by a combustion engine. 
which doesn't make sense on one way, but on the other way, well, on the other hand, it somehow makes sense again. It's was really, um, you know, really, really interesting concept, definitely. And we'll later see on out how that plays out for the consumption. So to drive it, you tend to drive it a little bit slower, a little bit smoother. So because you also want to try it out a little bit, ah, come on, I want to get it to the EV mode again. Mm. Although it is actually a little bit faster in the acceleration, gave you the figures earlier, than the 1.5 liter turbo, you know, because you have this electric drive as well. And here, for example, when you're driving slower again, you can keep it in the EV mode. Maybe you also have some buffering from the battery left, from regeneration, for example. Again, when you hit the brakes, the regeneration is active. Also, when you just let the car roll, by using the shifting pedals, you can then switch it around a little bit. So you hit the right pedal and there's hardly any recuperation. So the car is just rolling. And when you hit this left pedal right here, then you have actually a little bit harder regeneration. So here now, when I'm off the throttle, I feel that the car is actually just braking a little bit. And then you can also engage it a little bit further. So there are like one, two, three, four different modes. I also see though some, some small white arrows in the display right there. However, Honda has created it in a way that it's maximum regenerative, regenerative power of 0.1 G. And that means that the brake lights in the rear are not being applied. So, they did that on purpose because of that it's maybe a little bit too irritating. Um, some electric vehicles have that. When you just uh, go off the gas, then they um, have the braking lights flashing right there. And they actually did, did not want that here for the CRV. Very interesting. So again, you know, maximum regenerator braking and yeah. Car is really decelerating, but then again, not too much. The question is, how would you like it? Mm, I think when you drive this engine concept here, it somehow makes sense to have a maximum recuperation. Therefore, I set it here now. Um, you can also finely tune it with your steer with your throttle input, for example. And again, recuperation would also be possible with hitting the brakes. Then first, the regenerative braking is applied. And then when you eat, need even more braking power, then you would go, the car would actually use the normal brakes. Very interesting. So, but in general, it's not here, for example. I now go off throttle, but then I hit the brakes too. And then I also see that the maximum charge amount is being applied, and then I get more energy to the battery again. Now, when I start again, especially here downhill, then just the EV mode will be active. And here also when just standing still, that also makes sense somehow. You don't have this classic start-stop you would have with a normal combustion engine because you're in the EV mode anyway. And that's of course pretty cool, especially for city driving. When you have a lot of stop and go, then it totally makes sense. And also then on a local level reduces the emissions then. Now again, as I said, starting in the EV mode. And that's really cool. It's super silent you know that also adds to a more relaxed and comfortable driving feeling when you're just driving it silently in general this Honda CRV in the current generation also if you compare it to the previous one it's better insulated as you know, general noise insulation it's also a little bit calmer to drive mm, the suspension I told you that also with the very first test it's somewhat okay but it's not a suspension where I would say this is like best in class or something because it is in general on a rather soft note but then again when you hit some fiercer bumps some potholes on the road it's not that forgiving so the suspension is not their let's say you know their unique selling point of the vehicle but this is rather than this new drivetrain here with the hybrid and of course what I told you about earlier in the interior part the unique selling point to me for this vehicle is that you have so much room on the interior and that's really cool so they really use the space on the exterior in comparison to what is being offered on the interior now accelerating a little bit 
harder and then we also get the support of the combustion engine. It sounds a little bit like driving a CVT automatic, um, but again you also somehow feel that the engine is kept in a certain RPM uh, level, therefore it always sounds, you know, almost the same. That's, that's also very interesting. And when we drive faster, by the way, it's even more interesting, then we get to this other spot, you know, between 80 and 120 kilometers, where they make an exception and the ICE directly powers the wheels. That's also a very interesting and unique concept, and the reason for that is it's the same for your normal combustion engine car. Even if you have, you know, normal petrol or diesel, this speed area will be the one where your engine is the most efficient overall, you know, from all speeds you could have possibly picked. And that's also the reason why, and then in this case, although it's a hybrid, they decided that this speed would be the one where it's getting the direct power from the combustion engine. Very interesting. So here now again, I was first driving uphill, using a little bit more power, but then the good thing is of this hybrid, like you have with an electric vehicle, you can then recuperate again, so I can use the shifting pedals or the brakes. Here at the moment, just use the shifting pedals, because here the speed is being reduced. Now I'm not using the brakes. When I want to have a little bit less recuperation, I either take it off with the shifting pedal, or I apply the throttle a little bit more gently, and then I can somehow even it out. So you can basically pick which driving way or which regenerative braking way would be the one that is most suitable for you. That's definitely very interesting. And you know, it, it is somehow fun to play with this electric drive. Mm, you know, with those hybrids, you sometimes really make it a little, make a little game out of it to be then in the electric drive as often as possible. So now on this normal countryside, speed limit in Germany is 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. Now, first of all, we make like a normal acceleration. Yeah, sound-wise, it is a little bit weird. Again, like with the CVT automatic, although this one here, it does not have any transmission. That's also a very unique feature of this whole concept because it doesn't need one. They just adapt the electric power that is being applied. So now, to 100 kilometers an hour. So in this case, still still remaining in the hybrid mode. So you, you, you can't decide that for yourself. The car always decides you know, what is actually making most sense. They say that when you keep at a steady speed, that would be you know, a situation where it would be applied most of the time. Uh, it seems it's still in this hybrid mode. But you know, as a customer, you couldn't care less I mean, it's, it's for, for us now quite interesting. Now I'm even in the EV mode. So because when the car is just, you know, not needing any special more acceleration, it's just keeping it very steady, holding the speed, so to say, then even the EV mode is enough. The ACC, by the way, also stand equipment with this vehicle. So they actually have a lot of standard equipment, although this one here is then it's the top spec, but also good to know. So it seems to be like we rather use the EV mode more than anything else. Now again, recuperation. It seems to be that the recuperation is always being resetted. That's something you now I don't like that much. So I have to set it or reset it again. Probably then it's even even easy EV <laughs> even easier just to do it with the brake pedal. You know when when it's being reset all the time. Now we'll pay attention when it's being reset actually. You heard that it get, was getting a little bit loud, of course, when we're driving at higher speeds. So also in this segment, we have some cars which are a little bit better insulated, but it's overall at a good level, especially if we compare it then to the previous model. Here also good handling. The steering is actually quite nice. You feel that it's the Civic platform, this still quite new platform they've been using, and they have a very natural steering input. Mm, I mean, I could imagine steering a little bit less as for, you know, the, the ratio, but overall, again, it's not feeling that artificial. It's giving you a quite nice feedback. So steering the car is actually quite fun. And I also found the Civic quite fun to ride. Oh, there's a speed camera. We were right 
on spot with our speed right here. At the moment we are in the hybrid mode, so not entirely EV, but the engine, the combustion engine, is actually not that notable now in those lower speed areas. Now we hear it a little bit more, so the car is really constantly changing back and forth what it's doing with the system. Again, now we pay a lot of attention to it, but when you drive this car in your everyday driving life, you probably would say like, you know, just do what you want car and, you know, I'll just drive and that's it. And that's also uh, how it's meant to be. But nevertheless, very interesting. So some more general words, you know, you have this wide cockpit here in the front that's sometimes, you know, mm, a little bit distracting maybe at first, but you get used to it. Also, the hood is quite low, so you can see very well to the front. That's no problem. A pillar is not too thick. B pillar is even not too thick. However, you also have a blind spot monitor. This is a good option. And also to the rear, the car is, you know, still has this quite square dimensions. So you still have a nice overview. Yeah, when you're going uphill, it's something like the car feels a little bit like it would be struggling, but that's again then because you would used to have a changing RPM level with a normal combustion engine car and especially also without the CVT. By the way, you also have this active driving assist here. Of course, not meant to take your hands off the steering wheel, but you have this, you know, some, something like a semi-autonomous function. You can also activate it or deactivate it here at the steering wheel. Whoa, this ACC, when I said it, <laughs> gave some quiet acceleration. That's what I meant, you know, don't trust the system co completely. I said the ACC and it was still set at a higher level. So now again, and we test this function here, how it keeps me in the lane. It's also quite good lines here, left and right. So I try to see here and goes counter. So this is also quite nicely done. No braking for birds, of course. And then again, also using a little bit of the recharging. So assistance systems wise, this is also one of the major upgrades here in this new generation. And they've done actually a quite good job with that. So keeping you in the lane is possible. The ACC is also working quite properly, especially making sense together with the automatic gearbox. So that's nice. Then again, once more in the EV mode, we use some regeneration, got some power to the battery that can help with that. Very interesting. So the only thing I didn't really, um, you know, probably will be more on the motorway then, that the engine is directly driving the wheels. That would be the uh, biggest use case for that. So talked a lot about the different driving modes, talked about how it handles in general. Again, you know, this, it's, it's a mid-set SUV, but still is somewhat fun to drive mainly because of the good steering feeling and of course this new platform which also gives some more torsional stiffness to the vehicle that's also very important so now to slower speeds special here at the slower speeds this ev mode you know plays out all the advantages get more calm and of course also from the outside you hear less so that's also as for the sound emissions a quite good solution Definitely um, a very interesting lineup addition here with the hybrid drive. And I think now it's actually time, you know, we've driven quite a while now and had different driving modes, different situations, some city, some overland countryside driving and so on. So what's the actual consumption figure right now? We're really looking forward to that. Wow, that's about five liters. And it's, well, I mean, they, they promised us earlier that, you know, in their tests on paper, the, the you know, fuel savings would be up to 30% if you compare it to the normal combustion engine. And that seems to be true. So remember we had about 7.5 liters with the turbo engine. Is that also awesome? Could be like, sometimes they park those cars, you know, you know, those those small commercial vehicles and then they uh, add some more speed cameras in there. Um, but this time wasn't, wasn't the case. So let me just hold here a second because I directly want to translate it into MBG and I don't know that by heart at the moment. So then my 5 liters 
that would be 47 MPG US or 56 MPG UK. That's of course really amazing, you know, that's more like, yeah, like Toyota Prius. And again, we talked about the extra price you pay for this one here in comparison also to the 1.5 liter turbo. If you compare directly the automatic versions, this was about just 1,000. And if you go from the manual petrol to this one, then it was rather almost 4,000. So then it's, you know, a harsh extra price. But if you compare it to the other automatic version, this is totally fine. And this 1,000 extra dollars or euros, this will easily pay off. If you think about, you would use like, you know, two and a half liters less or 10 mpg more, then it easily pays out pay, pays out all over time. So that's about the consumption. At the same time, you have also more power in the acceleration, and we'll do that right now when we get to the next road. I mean, are there any disadvantages? That's a good, good question. I mean, um, since they're using the CVT automatics anyway, also in the normal combustion cars, um, it always sounds a little bit weird when you accelerate really hard, you know? So don't see this one in here as a, as a negative or something, you know? So we had the consumption in now here when we were really trying to, you know, drive economic. It will now fade away a little bit when we have the, the bigger acceleration, of course. So let's see, we can drive maximum of 70 here. Uh, well, no, downhill, I, I don't want to show the acceleration downhill. It would be a little bit fake then. So let's see when we get to the next even spot. And we'll also show you something more of the acceleration, which is possible with that one. Again, you know, about a second or almost, almost two seconds faster than the, with the 1.5 liter turbo to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. That also pays off then if you want to, you know, have a little bit more power reserves. So actually pretty cool as well this aspect. Ah, there I already see the famous German sign for unlimited speed which again is in countryside 100 kilometers, 60 miles, and on the autobahn, of course, totally unlimited. So there's no one behind us very far now, and let's just accelerate out from zero. Don't do this at home, kids. Plop. That's it. <laughs> Holger was also looking like, what's going on now? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty weird, but indeed it had better performance than with the turbo. Mm, yeah, the turbo sounded a little bit more natural, but here again, you know, there's no tr transmission, so there's basically like one gear, you know, so that's also the reason why. Um, now, of course, in this case, then all the drivetrain components were working together. You can also, you know, change the driving mode a little bit. There is this EV mode button then the car tries even harder to stay in this EV mode, for example, when you are in the city. Like now, um, you can always, you know, when you hit the throttle, you override it. But still, it's, you know, like a, like a, like a preset you do. Then Econ mode, this is also to, for example, reduce the throttle input to help you driving in a more fuel-saving way. And then there's the Sport button. And this one then also gives, again, more boost from the battery. So um, let's just see if this one's changing anything of the acceleration, if it sounds different, feels different. So maybe a little bit more spontaneous, maybe a little bit something. Um, so this sport mode then optimizes everything that you get, um, maybe a little bit better boost even out of it. Not sure if you would use that quite often. And you know, when you hammer it all the way through with a the throttle, then it also doesn't make too much of a difference. I mean, we can try it once more. There's also like nothing coming behind us. Now is the last chance we can accelerate something out. Now with the sport mode, let's go. That's it. 
So we really have to compare it in the video now, in the time code, if this was any difference in the sport or in the normal driving mode. Can tell you right now, but we'll check it out in time code. Let's do that together, guys. So very interesting. Again, you know, you have some more power. It sounds weird, but it's still good to have it. But that's just, you know, for um, demonstration purposes. Next speed camera right here. Um, more interesting is really to drive this car in a more economic fashion. That's also more fun. And somehow, you know, that's also, you know, how, how it's meant to be with this vehicle. So I release the sport mode once again and go back to the very normal driving mode. And then we can also enjoy the normal comfort because with this upright seating position, the seats are actually quite well done from the seat form. And as I said earlier, you can also get some base nice fabric seats, which also makes sense to control the price of this vehicle because I think also one of the strengths is here the price performance. And if you go for the highest trim as we have it here right now, then you somehow destroy this price performance. But you know, when you get the low or middle trim, then together with this new hybrid engine, you have a pretty interesting car technology-wise, price performance-wise, uh, interior space-wise, thank you. And then it still can make a lot of sense, you know. So, and, you know, why not going for this hybrid drive if the extra price is not too high? If you would consider a manual gearbox for your base CRV, then you will still save a lot of money. But if you want to go for the automatic anyway, then I think it can really make sense to go for this hybrid system. We've just proven it that it makes sense consumption-wise. And, you know, the, the concept they presented earlier with this, you know, saying we, we keep the combustion engine power in the sweet spot. So that, I think, was really, really interesting because with the normal combustion engine concept, you can hardly ever reach the sweet spot where this combustion engine would be you now exactly in the, in the one spot where it consumes less. But here with this system, which on the, you know, on the, on the, on the on one hand seems pretty, you know, strange or so on, you know, but then obviously it makes sense. Ah, there's, you know, found, there's actually two visualizations they have available here. So, there's one. Yeah, a lot to scroll here through this menu, definitely. There's one here. We so, now again, we can see, for example, we lift the throttle, battery is being repowered, go on the throttle, then we see this blue visualization. And now, because I really want to get into this mode now where just the engine is powering everything, and if I feel anything about that, so, cruise control, still not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe not on the motorway. So, let's get to the motorway for a little while. Now we're getting into this EV mode. So, then I, I beg you, I mean, it's really distracting to check all the driving modes. I'm doing this here now for you, that you really know more about technology of the car. Uh, and that when you drive the car, you don't have to do it yourself anymore. You can just rely on this video. So when you drive the car yourself, just concentrate and focus on driving and not on, oh, I'm in this mode and this mode again. <laughs> just drive and trust the vehicle for that. Because indeed, when you look at it all the time, it indeed gets somewhat distracting. So and now we get to the motorway. Let's see if we can finally get this vehicle to drive on the ICE only. Back to the EV mode. <laughs> but I mean, that's of course a good thing, you know, because again here you can see, the truth, you can see on camera, it goes slightly downhill. And that means again, we just need to maintain the speed and that's it. And so we can stay again in the electric vehicle mode. And that again, is good for our overall consumption figure. So, of course, we did this did this acceleration earlier now, and that means that not real, you know, it's not really realistic with two zero to one acceleration. So I reset it once more that you can take another look here. Whoa! After the motorway, I'm now at 90 kilometers an hour. Let's pull it a little bit further. It will also be interesting. 
So this is here the view then for the all-wheel drive system. Sometimes when I accelerate a little bit harder, then I also get power from the rear wheels. Other than that, usually just the front, wheel uh, drive, front wheels are being driven. So and now again, yes, I'm playing too much with it, sorry. There it is, finally. Now the ICE is powering the car directly. Ah, and there it is again. Yeah. So I see a small symbol in the middle right there. And that means at the moment the ICE is directly powering the wheels. And also the battery is gaining back some power. That's interesting. So at the same time the battery could gain back some power, but also the battery could give some power. So that's also possible. And now it's of course also interesting, what about consumption now? I know now the consumption as just the IC is running is a little bit higher because it will change again when we you know, go for example down a little bit and then we get more into the EV mode and so on. But obviously they found out that you know in this very speed situations it's really making more sense to go with the with the engine directly. Um, but it's also interesting that at higher speeds, for example, they say it makes more sense again if they are in the hybrid mode and it really goes up to a speed of 180 in kilometers. So that's possible. And let's also test this car here at higher speeds, see how that one performs, because it's also possible. Now it's 140, 150 kilometers. And yeah, I mean, you feel that and here that it's getting a little bit loud now, a little bit noisy. So that's not the special thing that this car would be moving in. Um, I still get quite nice feeling from the steering wheel. The car is also not shaking up too much. However, the soft suspension, of course, not the best now for the higher speed driving. I'm now also deactivating the steering, but again, yeah, the noise level from the wind noise is getting actually quite significant here now at higher speeds. But it also shows still, leaving the noise level aside, drifts from, from stability, steering, and also from the power I get. It's still possible to drive this uh, hybrid here at the higher speed. Actually, no problem. And, I mean, we even have the chance here to get it to maximum speed. So now it's down and we can go even a little bit faster than 180. Yeah, now it's limiting, 188. Yeah, now it's... It's done, yeah. I can't remember when I was reaching the maximum speed of a car at some point. Did I ever do that on any review? I'm not sure. But still, I mean, performance is not too bad. It's also show you like a um, high speed acceleration when we're already at speed. Like, uh, for example, when I'm doing like some 130 to 140, or 125 to, let's see. Picking up, picking up, but you see, there's still something coming, and that's 140. So that was 125 to 140 kilometers. So there are still some power reserves, so that's actually not a problem. You can still have that. So let's present it here once again. And the good thing is, you know, again, I'm showing you different aspects of driving this vehicle, but the most fun it was really trying to be in this EV mode quite often and you know in the city and countryside driving and so on. Here in the motorway it's totally fine and comfortable as soon as you you know accelerate a certain speed or exceed a certain speed then it gets a little bit too noisy but other than that it's quite comfortable to drive the vehicle. That's really cool. So if you keep it here about 1 or 20 kilometers an hour, 70 miles, then it's also um, a comfortable cruising speed where you can also sustain that for a longer time. So I would recommend that. And then you can maybe you know when, when you have the car and you know when you have it quite new then you can also, also can check out some dr the driving modes and so on. So let's go back to this mode again. Now I, at the moment I'm in this view where I can see I was everything was done with the combustion engine. Now again, recuperation, EV mode only, getting some more power to the battery. Now release it again. So it's all a fun ride, very interesting. So we always keep you updated here with new technologies and 
also in this case you can call it an alternative drivetrain so to say and we've been testing pure EV cars, plug-in hybrids and also those inbuilt hybrids for example the Toyotas which also makes sense again Honda does claim that their hybrid system would be the even more efficient one and we've seen it is efficient you can have some really decent fuel consumption with it is it really better than the system of Toyota that's of course a tough decision I think you would need a direct head-to-head -head test for that on the very same test route at the very same day and the very same conditions and then also with cars that are actually comparable that will be easier in the future at the moment would be the RAV4 against this one that could be a good test definitely um, but it will be even easier in the future because Honda is obviously that founder of that system here that they want to also roll it out to even other cars for example also put it to the smaller vehicles to the Honda Jazz for example very interesting so I hope you also found this ride here today with the new hybrid the IMMD that interesting as I did. And now to our conclusion for today with the Honda CRV Hybrid. In general, about the CRV, where does it have its weaknesses? Well, it could be a little bit fancier from the interior, for example. The suspension could be a little bit better. The noise insulation at higher speeds could be a little bit better. But where is it actually unique? It's a very good price performance deal and has a lot of interior space. And it's a somehow, you know, not complicated car. It's easy to use. Although the new hybrid technology is, you know, when you hear about the first time, very complicated. Yes. And you want, does that really make sense? But obviously, the test showed that here today, it does make sense. It has actually significant consumption reduction. So pretty cool result we scored today here. And I think it's also very interesting just to have it for these EV driving moments. You know, it's another step towards the full EV drive. However, you don't have the disadvantages of an electric vehicle with, you know, fueling up and so on. So depending on, for example, when you do not have a good charging infrastructure, this could be something here in between to go for an hybrid then. And again, low fuel consumption, especially if you want it, if you use this EV driving modes and you know, you don't have to set anything specially. The car does it all uh, the, itself. You just have to be gentle with the throttle and then you can really save a lot of fuel and even more than you would just do with a normal combustion engine car. It was a very interesting driving experience. I just can recommend you to go uh, through it maybe once more and drive it uh, really full length together with me here. It was very interesting for us and to see that there are even new hybrid systems on the markets where maybe no one has heard of before and they still obviously somehow work. What do you think about this new hybrid drivetrain here with the CRV? Please join our discussion and also tune in next time. Or if you want to know more about the 1.5 liter engine, the turbo, we've also had that one in a review earlier. We will also link it in the video description and also in the comments. Thank you so much and see you next time.